wherever you are. Make it, it TTT. T- oh. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome to Spirit's Journey, coming to you live on Truth Frequency Radio and simulcast on Oneness Talk Radio. Your hosts are Patrick and Catherine Andres. Join us each week as we explore a wide range of metaphysical topics such as dreams, astrology, intuitive readings, and life purpose. You'll receive practical guidance so that you can live your most awesome life. Learn more about what we do at intuitiveschool.com and connect with us on Facebook at Spirit's Journey Radio. Hello and welcome to Spirit's Journey. We are coming to you live on Truth Frequency Radio. We are also simulcast on One is Talk Radio. You can find us on iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and Talk Stream Live. We're here in the heartland holding the energy for spiritual truth and awareness. I'm Patrick. I'm Catherine. Welcome, everyone, and Happy New Year 2020. It's going to be an amazing year, and we are so glad all of you are with us to ring in the new year. And today we have a longtime friend with us who's going to be sharing some amazing insights about the new year, metaphysics, and all that good stuff. So we have Christy Clemens Hoffman today. Um, She is a lifetime and lifelong intuitive channel teacher and essential oils consultant, and she loves connecting with people and their spiritual team. She does amazing angel readings. She does medical intuitive readings, mediumship, and Akashic Records. Um, She helps clients with questions like spiritual growth, what am I here to do, unlocking questions about our life purpose, past lives, health, relationships, and more. She also uses Reiki techniques along with her intuitive abilities. I mean, she covers it all. She is also a certified level two QHHT, which stands for quantum healing hypnosis technique. And if you don't know what that is, we're going to ask Christy about that today. Um, This is a technique that was developed by Dolores Cannon. So welcome, Christy. Hi, Christy. Thank you, Catherine. Hi, Patrick. Thank you so much for having me. Well, let's delve into, I bet I made a lot of people question, what the heck is QHHT? Because I know that's a big part of the work you do. It is a big part of the work I do. And QHHT is quantum healing hypnosis technique. It was developed by Dolores Cannon, hmm, gosh, in the 70s sometime. I mean, it's, it's evolved over time. It started out as past life regression. She and her husband, Johnny, were working with people doing the classic hypnosis subjects such as you know weight loss and stop, stopping smoking and uh, stress relief, stress reduction, that type of thing. And spontaneously, one of their clients went into a past life and nobody was studying that at the time. So they thought, oh my gosh, what do we have here? And they worked with that client several times just to discover what past lives and incarnations were about. And she had done that work on past lives for many, many years. She added on um, recovering lost memories of people who had had alien encounters and abduction experiences. She added on uh, healing. There's a huge healing component in this. In fact, it's in the name. And then there's also the aspect of just uncovering lost knowledge. I, just anything that has been covered that has been lost, anything that is out there, we can discover through the conscious and the subconscious mind. So, and that's what this work is all about. And it's absolutely fascinating. Oh, it is. And I mean, Dolores was such a pioneer. We actually had the privilege of meeting her in person, amazing person. So thank you, Christy, for carrying on the amazing work of Dolores. And, you know, even though we're talking about the new year and what's going on, it is important, I think, to understand how we got to this point, not only individually, but collectively, by looking at our past. And so, um, mm-hmm. do you, you know, want to share like any stories of how people have benefited from going back to the past to understand their present and unlocking more potential for now? Oh, absolutely. Just the other day I had a terrific session that I think is pretty emblematic. This woman in the current lifetime, she's had some struggles with, hmm, not really mental illness, although her mother and her husband had her taking, um, psychiatric drugs. She really did not need them. She was just very, very intelligent, spoke inconvenient truths. And, you know, she was, she was kind of labeled as uh, something other than 
I don't know, just, just kind of unhinged, but she really is not. Anyway, we went to two different lifetimes. One, she was this uh, woman in, in like the thirties who was running a very successful business person, had this partner who they were just in each other's pockets. They were, but they were skating on illegal activities. All the things that they were doing were not exactly legal. And she ended up, um, you know, taking off the wrong person and was uh, taken out by some goons, as she described. And then um, she used her smarts and her wit, her, her beauty to take people's money, men, specifically men's money. So she learned that, yes, that can work, but might not be the best. And you have to be careful of what you do. And she went to another lifetime where she was a very happy young wife, a new mother, but was killed in an earthquake. And she learned there that everything in this life is fleeting. You have to be happy in the moment. And she's had a lot of loss, several miscarriages, a baby who died of SIDS, um, a sister who died of cancer in the present lifetime. So having some perspective of, yes, life goes on there is going to be tragedy tragedy you never know and then we also went to a lifetime where she was in paris and told fortunes and she would people would come to her and she would tell them their fortunes apparently one time she told an inconvenient fortune um made an inconvenient prediction and um, was put to death for it and she had said while under that i'm too smart i can't speak up i can't say what what i have to say and learned quickly that, yeah, you can be smart, but don't let anybody know it. And so those had <laughs> huge, imp- re- huge repercussions in her present lifetime. And then also during that session, she had just, you know, she's not that old. She's like maybe late 30s and had all these just various aches and pains from being a hairdresser and standing on her feet and on her knees and um, various things, several surgeries, C-sections, DNCs, removal of ovaries, that type of thing, and a lot of scar tissue built up. Well, during the session, all of that was resolved, and she just texted me again last night, and she said, I can't believe it. Knee pain, gone. Hip, gone. The abdomen, tightness I felt in my abdomen, gone. All these little kind of uh, minor little ailments and aches and pains were completely gone. The subconscious is so powerful, can do all of that and more. We don't have to live with pain. I think that's amazing release. And, you know, I remember Dolores, what I always say, Mm -hmm. you know, with her sessions with people, you know, they'd come in complaining of, of, oh, this hardship and that hardship and whatever. And Dolores would say, well, but what did you learn from it? And when when the person was able to articulate, you know, really get to the core of what they learned, that's when the release happens. So the events that we go through don't really matter. You know, the soul lives and die. I mean, the soul has been in bodies that have died over and over again. Right. So it doesn't even right. care if the body dies, the soul's like, okay, did you learn the lesson? Don't, don't you feel that? And so I think that is such the key, Christy, that you helped her really get to the understanding of these so she could release it. And then the pain was gone. Yeah, absolutely. We hold on to these things for the longest time until we do have that understanding. You know, my tagline is bring awareness to life. When we have awareness of what's going on behind the scenes, as you will, either uh, past life or a greater spiritual truth or soul family karmic type of balancing we need to do, when we have that awareness, then our life just improves because we only come here, you know, why would you go to see a movie or read a book if everything that happens in it is positive. There are no challenges. You know, that would be a really boring story. Oh, yeah. So well, we come always got to have the, the antagonist in the movie. <laughs> right. Yeah. You got to have growth. You got to have development. Something's got to happen for crying out loud. Right. So um, that's what we do. That's why we come here. Just so we can have. T- well, in fact, this client uh, the other day, she it came up in her session. It's like, I'm ready to go again. Every time we got to another, the end of a, a different incarnation, I'm ready to go back. I need a new challenge. I need a new puzzle. I <laughs> love that. Yeah. Well, and you know, it was when wonderful. I do, well, when I do astrology charts for people and I see a really challenging yeah. chart, you know, sometimes the person gets down about it. Like, oh, I want a, a fun, easy chart. And, and, and what people don't understand is, you know, um, having a challenging chart is good because it gives you that trigger 
that motivation to resolve the tension. And so there, there's two paths people go in life. There's the people that are in the challenge or, you know, feel the tension and they actively step, take steps to resolve it. And they usually become quite successful people. And then there's the other right. person who experiences the tension and they, they, for some reason, they cannot overcome it. And so then they feel that challenge is bad. You know, would you agree? Right. Oh, totally. Absolutely. You know, some people just get so stuck in their story of that challenge that they can't see anything else. And so guess what? You're going to be stuck in that challenge and life will be challenging. But you can take this challenge and say, awesome, what can I do to resolve this, make it better, see past it? Then that's where the real growth happens, don't you think? I mean, that's so true in astrology when we see I mean, certain things are are laid out, certain things that we need to challenge ourselves with in each lifetime, certain things we say, okay, this is what I want to check off of my laundry list of experiences to have. And then we do that. And then we're ready to move on. If not, well, then guess what? You got to come back and do it again. Yeah. It seems like the key word there, it seems like the key word there that you mentioned was stuck because you do hear Mm -hmm. these people go on about their story over and over again, and they're reliving that experience every time they recount that negative story. But then you also have people who get stuck in a positive story. Those are the people we, we talk about who are reliving their glory days. You know, they just can't get past one or two, you know, amazing moments that they had sometimes even as far back as high school. So I think the real thing there is just to learn from the experience, really appreciate it, but be able to move on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure you find in what both of you do is that um, you just need, they just need a little bit of help to get past that. And once they have that realization, they can move past it. So I really appreciate what both of you do because you, you do astrology and you do the past life readings and you do all of this really wonderful stuff to help bring people to that awareness. There's so many roads to lead to this. You know, it's not just you know, psychic reading or hypnosis or astrology. There's so many different things that we can do and apply to get this insight. And I just, I just love that there's so much available. Well, you know, I always say people, once you open that door, whatever it was that opened the door for you, if you got a past life reading or a numerology reading, once that door's open, it's like a floodgate. You know, most people are like, okay, what's oh, yeah. next? And as I was reading your bio, Christy, I was like, dang, you know, I was so amazed at all the different areas you've delved into. And so I'm always curious. And even though I've known you for many years, I don't think I've ever really asked you to share what was your door open or how'd you get involved in doing all this? What was your journey? I usually tell people, you got to buy me a beer and I'll tell you the whole story. But <laughs> um, <laughs> So basically I grew up uh, being intuitive and having no idea what that was. I didn't know that was a thing, but I knew that I knew stuff, saw stuff, I was aware of things that other people weren't. And I was also labeled as being very sensitive as a child and not knowing that that actually impact. I had no idea. I didn't know that you could make a career of it, you know, that people would be interested in learning more. I just had no idea what you could do. And so I was also, I grew up in Overland Park, Kansas, which I know you two are both in kind of that area. And going to a a large suburban high school, you just don't talk about that stuff. And so I shut it down, had no idea what, how to develop it. And then, so I kind of bounced around a bit. I got a theater degree. I moved to Europe, spent a couple of years there. I taught English, came back. I was in public relations and then publishing. And then I was at Hallmark. And so, (sighs) All this time, I was still interested. I was reading, I was dabbling, but still didn't think that I could do anything with it. And then uh, I had a huge setback. My husband and I had split up, and I knew there had to be some bigger, bigger story. And I started looking at karma and past life connections, soul family, and of course, found Dolores. So I thought that, well, I could go down and see Dolores. I could have a session with her and get a lot of insight into the situation. It's only, you know, about four, half, five hours down to Arkansas where she was. And I could find someone to watch my daughter for the weekend and um, I'll get this insight. Yeah, that sounds great. So I called up, (laughs) I called up her office and as you can imagine, she was yeah, she was really not available. They said, well, she's booked up for the next four years. Yeah. And I, 
I said, well, I was kind of hoping to get in before then. And they <laughs> said, well, <laughs> they said, well, she started teaching people how to use her technique. Maybe you can find someone in your area. And even then the light did not go off. But so I did, I found someone in, in this area, my husband and I both had sessions and neither one of us got very far with it. Um, quite honestly, you know, of course I do this technique now, but I was not able to do it at that time. And so the practitioner referred me to a woman named Gail Larmer, who you might, you might want to interview her as well. She's in Stillwell and she, I went to her for a reading because he said that she can often help you with these questions of past lives, of karma, of soul dead, of soul family, all of these questions. And I went to her and she, she gave me a fantastic reading and I referred lots of friends to her. And then she started to teach classes and I took every one of the classes that she was offering and I learned how to harness what I was experiencing, deal with what I was experiencing and use it and started seeing clients like 2010, 2011 and then added Akashic Records. I got certified to work in the Akashic Records. And then um, then that's about the time that I met both of you at Transcendence at the Wellness Center here in the, the area. And I learned uh, Reiki, Reiki 1 and 2, started working with energy healing with clients around the country. And then, um, let's see, a couple of years later, fast forward, I was laid off from Hallmark with about 700 other co-workers. We were all part of this huge, massive layoff. And by that time, I knew that I could not do corporate America anymore. This was not uh, something I could do, for the, certainly for the rest of my career. It was just uh, corporate life was, is challenging. And I decided that I would take entrepreneurial classes. That was part of the layoff package. They give a great severance package at Hallmark. And I took entrepreneurial classes, learned how to open a business and run it, and open Radiate Wellness. And so Radiate Wellness was born in 2016. And the same week that I launched the website and officially opened for business, I went to Eureka Springs, Arkansas for a week of training to do QHHT. I don't know what I was thinking. And so, yeah, I took the level one training in 2016 and just kind of capped off what I had been doing, the work I'd been doing. And then the following year, I did level two, and I just did level three training uh, this October. And um, I, then you have a series of coaching sessions. So I'll have a few coaching sessions before I'm level three. And then I also added on introspective hypnosis, which we had not talked about. But that introspective hypnosis is very interesting. It was developed in Brazil based on Ericksonian hypnosis. It works with repatterning. Um, old memories, including even past life memories. We never know where we're going to go. It helps with forgiveness therapy, forgiveness work. It helps with removing attachments and entities because Dolores never saw attachments. She never saw entities in her work, and so she never, she never addressed it. But introspective hypnosis addresses that very effectively. And that's fascinating work. I did that because... You can do introspective hypnosis online. You cannot do Q8. You have to do QHHT in person. And I totally understand why. They're just slightly different ways of working. And I really, really enjoyed it. It just out opens up a bit more. So I'm just really looking forward to becoming level three and then just continuing on this path because it's really, it's really awesome. <laughs> so one of the key things that I heard in your story, Christy, that I hear in so many is that there's an one inciting event that yes. you know, triggers the path. You know, for you, it was the, the divorce. And for so many people, yes. it, it is a divorce. Um, sometimes right. it's a job loss. Sometimes it's death of somebody around right. them. And, and again, though, it makes me think of, wow, challenges or what we would consider negative are sometimes the most you know, amazing thing that could happen to us because they say, wake us up and say, okay, there's more out here. Um, and I'm hoping oh, yeah. that, uh, you know, as, as we continue on this path, I've been exploring this idea for a long time about the possibility of learning through joy rather than needing these, you know, two by fours over the head to wake us up. I think that's wonderful. I think that's wonderful. I mean, it's like the tarot card of the tower. You have to knock everything down before you can build it up. But 
you know, maybe there's a way to, you know, not have to completely destroy it. I think that we're moving toward that anyway. Now that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, next week I'm going to do a lot of astrology folks, but today I just do want to say that, uh, January 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th are going to be very explosive days astrologically. And so Christy, as we, as we move into the energies of 2020, I was curious with you intuitively, what have you picked up on for the coming year ahead? Well, it really looks like smooth sailing for many people. You know, a lot of my clients had challenge in 2019. That was not my case, but many people I know had a really hard time in 2019. A lot of loss, a lot of setbacks, and a lot of just heavy energy. I know there's been a lot of clearing of energy in 2019. I feel like so much is going to be coming to light. We've been talking about this for a long time, and I feel like it's really now coming to the forefront. So I'm hoping that we can find out more about what's been going on in the shadows, about <coughs> about some of the things that have been done in our name. So I'm really excited about more disclosure. I think, too, there's going to be a huge um, push for UFO disclosure. I do see that coming up around May, around maybe June, May or June, of more disclosure coming out. And people... No, I mean, we had that event of, uh, there was a Navy, uh, Navy fighter, I think a Navy plane that had seen a UFO and reported it. And it was an official document. I feel, think about, you know, mid year, we're going to have more of that. Well, that's awesome because I know so much, so many people want to know what the heck's been going on and what people have been saying, you know, it seems like the world's falling apart. Right. And I say to people, well, right. all this corruption, this deceit, this has been going on for years, but what's happening now is the veil's being lifted on it and we're more and more people are mm-hmm. becoming aware of it. So it's not that it mm-hmm. wasn't happening before. It's just with all the activity with Pluto and Saturn, you know, it's bringing this gook up for us to see. Yeah. And it's not that it's just happened yesterday. And like we talked about, um, you know, Pluto and what's going on, we have to bring things out in the open in order to see what the dysfunction was to create something different because we can't just, yeah. you know, build on lack of awareness. We have to see what didn't work in the past so that we can create something new that, that does work. Yes. Yes, absolutely. There has been, there have been so many little microbursts in the past year. I feel like they've been been building to more disclosure, more openness in, in this coming year, this current year, the new roaring 20s. Yeah, I know. I was just saying, uh, talking to somebody about that. Yeah, the 1920s, roaring 20s, what are these going to be called, you know? Um, right. But I, I wanted to go back to the UFO disclosure um, yeah. and let everybody know that Ozark Mountain uh, does do the mo- the largest, I believe, the largest um, UFO conference. Uh, it's usually in yes. the spring, so you can go to Ozark Mountain Publishing to find out if you want more UFO information. But one, of the, I wanted to ask your perspective on this, Christy. So Dolores Cannon, uh, through her work, found that the aliens or extraterrestrials, whatever you want to call them, they were mm-hmm. friendly, that they, they are here to help us. A lot of people you know, are freaked out by aliens thinking they're here to destroy us. So do you believe that right. there's good and bad uh, other life I forms? Do. I do, just because I've, I've seen it in sessions. So I think overwhelmingly the ones that do work with us are benevolent. They're positive. And, but there are some forces out there that are not so positive that would really like to see us being enslaved. And I do not say that lightly, Catherine, because I, I have seen this in sessions that this comes out. I had one session that was very, very disturbing. This woman had um, a history of a domineering father who was uh, sexually abusing her as well, but seemed to be seemed to be involved with some government people who were involved with uh, a different race, an alien race. And when I tried to explore and um, and ask more about that in the session, I was soundly told, "No, you cannot know." And this woman started having um, an extreme reaction and was frantic, absolutely frantic with what she was seeing and what she was hearing. So I do believe that there are some 
forces out there that are not good. But if we can stay positive and keep our vibrations high as a whole, that that is our best line of defense. Because I do know that most beings are benevolent and creative creator beings. Cool. We do have to keep our vibrations high. Mm-hmm. It goes back to the law of attraction, right? That the kind of energy mm-hmm. you're putting out there attracts your experiences to you. And we do find sometimes, even with our intuitive readings, that there is information that's withheld for whatever reason. Uh, usually this right. would happen like a past life reading. And I don't think it's because there is particular evil, but as one example, it's kind of interesting because a lot of times the name of the person in that past life is given. And in this particular instance, the information that came out said, well, this person was very famous, and so there's a concern that um, it would disrupt her life now if she knew who she was, because she isn't really right. in a place where she can accept who she was. So she needs to kind of work through some of these things, and a lot of those things actually came up in the reading that she needed to work through. And then over time, as she becomes more comfortable with herself and her power, then she would be able to understand who she was in that past lifetime. But she had mm-hmm. some things to work on. Well, Christy, we're going to be That's going happened. into a break here in just a moment. Mm-hmm. And so we will come back with you after the break. This is a very interesting conversation. Really looking forward to it. So while we're in this break, if you are joining us on this conversation, please go to our Spirit's Journey page on, on TFRlive.com. You can become a supporter of the station and the show. And um, then you also gain access to all the archives on Truth Frequency Radio. And you can also uh, enjoy our archives on our YouTube channel. This is Spirit's Journey on Truth Frequency Radio and One Us Talk Radio. And we will see you. Real people, real radio. Initiating the Truth Frequency. This is Truth Frequency Radio. We are back from the break. If you're just joining us, we are here with Christy Clemens Hoffman, and uh, we have a lot of very interesting things coming up ahead of us still yet to talk about. And one of the things, Christy, that I wanted to jump into in this Mm -hmm. second half, because we have some experience with Dolores Cannon and quantum healing hypnosis technique, because uh, Ozark Mountain Publishing is actually our publisher for our books. Yes. And so it was uh, really amazing being able to go down there because... uh, for example, my book, um, Owner's Manual for the Mind, and Catherine's book on the uh, Soul Choices series. And uh, so we would be invited to go down there to speak sometimes, so we'd get to hear her speak. And I remember one time she gave some segments on, you know, you were talking about lost knowledge in the first half of the show. Yes. And she had a very interesting series on Nostradamus and kind of her interaction where Nostradamus actually was asking for clarification from her while she was... Uh, communicating. So she started to wonder, is there like this two-way communication? Because, you know, if you historically read Nostradamus and his process, he would hear this voice. And so, uh, you know, (laughs) you begin to wonder, was he hearing her? And then actually that was playing into his his prophecies. So have you had any experiences with your clients or anywhere else where you've had lost knowledge resurface? Oh, let's see. Let me think about that. Well, there's several creation stories. Um, well, oh, oh, let me see. Oh, here's a good one. So this client um, had gone to a lifetime under the pyramids and a student in a mystery school that was led by Mary Magdalene. And they were all young women and um, they were just, burst, the powers of B came and um, busted up the school and made everyone scatter. Uh, Magdalene went, of course, to France, um, and these these young women went to carry on the teachings that they had learned there. I've also had uh, two clients who had gone to the time of Jesus and were there to observe 
Jesus and uh, learn from him and interact with him. And those were very powerful. You know, I'm no, by no means a Christian, but a huge fan of Jesus. And that was very, very moving. And then, like I said, many creation um, stories, I suppose you could say, um, not just here, but on other planets as well of creation and then going around and, and checking on the various creation. It's so funny. You know, you know this. You've read Dolores' work extensively. The same type of things will come up in clients who are very different and who don't even know each other. And you'll, see, you'll hear many of the same things, maybe the same symbols, uh, the same types of stories come up again and again from people who have no connection whatsoever. And then you have to think, wow, there's really something to that. But yeah, as that's, far as, um, mm-hmm. Oh, I was going to say that's something that really fascinated me is that the way she described it, as she would be working on these books, um, her information would be contiguous, but it would the information would actually come to her through a number of different unrelated clients, which I thought was fascinating. Yes, it's interesting. So, so things such as eyes, many clients will go to a place where all they see is an eye. And it sounds so strange, but it is, it is so pervasive. Um, another, other stories where they say, well, um, I'll ask them how they go into a such a certain structure, especially that's on a, if it's on another planet or in another dimension, they say, well, I just think it and I go in. This happens so frequently and describing landscapes, certain landscapes and certain types of beings, these descriptions um, are very similar across the board. You know, what was interesting was one time I was doing a group session. I was doing a past life and then a future life. And um, more than one person during the future life progression experienced the same things. And you have to think, wow, there's really something to that. They gave similar descriptions of colors and music in the future. And that was, that was, we were all astounded. So yeah, there's something, definitely something to that. You know, all consciousness is connected. We're all part of the subconscious and it goes through us and we're all, we're just all connected. And it's really uh, apparent when you do, uh, QHHT because so many of these people do have very similar experiences across the board. So it's fascinating. I'm sure you see that as well. Yeah, some of the experiences that are probably more common for us is when we're doing past life readings, we have people yeah. who have lifetimes that come up in Atlantis. So it's always interesting to hear about that yeah. time period. And that was something that early on in my in my study and practice, you know, I wasn't really sure if that was more like an allegory in our actual time period. But right. through the readings, we've had so many people come up with lifetimes. And it's just amazing listening to these past life readings because, you know, it's, it's like you can't just make up that much information off the top of your head that quickly and fluidly. And I mean, when, when Catherine's doing a reading, sometimes I'll have technical problems and I can, I can actually have her pause just like a pause button, like maybe a, a mic went out or something like that. And I have to fix that problem. And sometimes even like three or four minutes could go by before I can get the issue resolved. And then I just pick up right where I left off. And it's almost like I just hit the play button and there it goes. You know, it's, it's really fascinating. So. Well, and, and also I, talking about how we're all connected, you know, we've got the pyramids in Egypt. We've got the pyramids in, in uh, you know, um, the Mayan over there in Mexico. Right. Uh, so, right. you know, how, how did all these same type of structures get built? All these different places in the world from different people using similar technology, you know, mental technology. Of course, there's a lot of discourse about how these pyramids were built. We know it wasn't, you know, just stone after stone. No, there was no way they could have been built like that. So this amazing technology they used to build those. So we know there's something much bigger connecting all of us. Oh, there absolutely is. Um, also, just the green man, you know, that that symbol was the symbol of the green man was found in South America, Africa, um, Europe, Asia, during various different time periods, but they had not communicated with each other. And it's the same symbol appearing over and over and over. Creation stories, many times, many creation stories and creation myths from different cultures have to do with people coming down, giving them certain technology like planting or building, something like that, and then going back. And we see these things over and over again. There is no coincidence. 
It's fascinating. Well, and, and talk about fascinating. I, I want to share the coolest uh, ghost story, if you will, that, that occurred Ooh. over the holiday and get your uh, perspective on it, Christy. So it's, it's sure. Christmas Day and we were all at my mom's house. There must have been um, 18 people. And, you know, there's a lot of people are talking, eating, you know, it's just a big party. So my, my little great niece, who's not quite yet to, uh, all of a sudden everybody said, wait, where, where did Brielle go? The little niece couldn't find her. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the door leading down to the basement was open. So her mom oh. said, oh my gosh, I'm going to check down here. She runs downstairs. Now it's pitch black in the basement. This little girl is waving. And her mom said to her, Brielle, what are you waving at? And she can barely talk. And she says, Grandpa. Now, my, <laughs> my dad uh, passed away about in, was it eight years ago. And uh, the basement was his favorite place to be because he was a boater. And so he would go down there and work on all his boat <laughs> stuff. Now, little <laughs> Brielle, of course, not even being two, never even knew him. Um, yeah. But there was a, she was standing in front of this boat picture one of his boating pictures as she was waving and saying this. So that just sent goosebumps up all of our spines. And so we know that the veil between this world and the next is very thin, especially for children because their subconscious Mm -hmm. is still so open. And so I wondered, um, you know, what you, your, your thoughts are on that in terms of, you know, working with people to help them understand this kind of event. Oh, absolutely. You know, I think that, the, well, first I'm going to tell you a cute story, and then I'll give you my take on that. Um, when I was a baby, just about the same age as your great niece, uh, just barely, barely talking, and my dad was in college, and he was a night watchman, and my mom was an x-ray tech, and she often worked at night at Research Hospital. Well, my dad was a um, night watchman at Southeast High School over by Swope Park here in Kansas City, huge 1920s sprawling brick campus building and so he was a night watchman he he would bring me and my playpen set up my playpen and I would just be playing or sleeping or whatever while he was studying and then he'd make his rounds and take me with him one night he was studying and I was my playpen playpen and then he heard me babbling and he turned around and looked and I was waving in the corner I said hi Mr. Man and he said he quit the next day (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I I think that uh, I mean that's the first time that I know that I had seen a ghost. But no, children really they're they're fresher from the veil. They they all of us are born perceptive, intuitive anyway. And children, um, we can really see that in them. There's so many stories of children who have done exactly the same thing. Now there was a book called Flatland that I'm I don't remember when it was written. Maybe the 20s, maybe the 10s of last century. And it was about a two-dimensional society, about how there is no, there's length and width, but no height, no depth. So to them, a third dimension would be unheard of, unreal, frightening. It's like, how can you possibly communicate with a third dimension that doesn't exist? I feel like that's the same with us that we are here in four dimensions, the fourth, of course, being time. All these other dimensions are around us like an overlay and that if we are perceptive, if we're open, if the veil is thin, there are certain areas too. There are certain places where the veil is thin or certain times of day, then we can perceive these. And so I, I do believe that, you know, our loved ones are with us. They're with us all the time. People ask me all the time. It's like, well, if my mom's with me, is she with me when I'm in the bathroom? <laughs> is she with me? Is she watching me when I'm in, when, in, with my husband in the bedroom? No. <laughs> are you are you thinking of your mom then? No. Um, they're with us and they're, they're existing alongside us. They do follow us along throughout life. They watch us, but they really don't come near until we think of them. So that for that reason, you know, a family gathering, they're not going to miss. You know, your father was down in their basement. He was attracted by, of course, all the energy of all the family in the house and being in one of his favorite places. And I'm sure she, your great niece, um, had felt his energy and wanted to go down and say hi and, and see him. So no, I don't doubt that at all. These things happen all the time. Oh, we have so many stories, even people who say they don't believe. It's like, well, I don't believe, but yeah, there was that one time I, my mom came to me. It's like, right. well, then <laughs> that's it, right? 
Yeah, we often say that children are open up until about the age of seven, which is where the conscious yeah. mind really becomes fully formed and dynamic. I really like your description of the dimensions because sometimes as a model, just to kind of help people understand how it works, you know, I might use uh, the analogy of a, of a radio tuner, you know, so they can understand yeah. how the mind might be able to shift. Um, you know, in, in physics, we understand it might be more of a phase shift or a dimensional shift, but in terms of just working with a radio, people usually still have a radio in their car where they can shift from one frequency to another. So you can kind of see how you might, your mind might be able to tune in to one reality and then shift over here and tune into another reality that's occurring simultaneously. So it's all oh, very absolutely. fascinating stuff. Now we are in the new year. And so predictions tend to be a tradition at this time of year. Do you happen to have any intuitive insights or anything that you've gotten about 2020 that you would like to share? Yeah, a lot of cleansing, like I said, more disclosure, especially around May, June, um, but much cleansing, um, specifically around Russia, just cleansing people who are bad actors, bad apples, and in the Mideast, just so much cleansing. Now, I've been reading, you know, we talked about Nostradamus, and I have been reading one of the books, one of the Nostradamus books, and they're talking about the Antichrist and coming from the Middle East, and I just wonder if this Suleiman character was um, who he was talking about, but I don't know. I don't, I'm not seeing a rise of an Antichrist or anything like that in this year, but I am seeing a lot of cleansing and a lot of smoothing over. So many things coming to the forefront. Um, you know, predictions really on a grand scale are not my fort. Um, I work more on the personal, but Really, that's what I'm seeing for this for this year. Wait a minute, they're telling me the fall. Excuse me, they're telling me fall. Some beloved um, actor, character, personality, September female. So watch in September, um, some beloved woman, like a like an actor, actress, or a a singer um, being lost tragically. And there being some mystery around it. Okay. Okay. Right. So that's, yeah, that's, that's about all I'm getting for the next, for the new year. Well, Christy, with your thoughts on cleansing it is right on because Pluto is going to be very active this year in Capricorn and Pluto is the planet of death and restructure, uh, death and, mm -hmm. and death and rebirth. And so it's going to be continuing its cleansing, so to speak of what right. no longer serves us or the world uh, in order to bring something new. And, you know, Buckminster Fuller in his wisdom once said that, you know, if a structure isn't working, you, you can't sit there and work with the old structure. You need to completely mm -hmm. destroy it and start something new. And, and, um, I think that's really powerful because a lot of times, you know, government and all the politicians keep talking about what they're going to fix in social security, what they're going to fix in education, what they're going to fix in healthcare. And it's like, you know what, they're not getting at the root of the problem, which is the whole structure of the thing, you know? And, and that's why I think mm -hmm. we haven't seen real change because they keep trying to just make a little tweak here and there to a structure that just doesn't work anymore, in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, we do kind of have to do this, this cleansing and sometimes it's not fun, but, uh, my motto is, you know, with Pluto, I tell people, you know, let it go. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes we do have to just kind of scrape the table and start all over again. Um, I do, I am feeling that big changes are coming to our, our election system and that, um, they're not going to be popular, um, and not going to be the best but it needs to happen in, in that cleansing, in that cleansing before we can move on to a system that is better, that's going to be equitable for everybody, lets everybody vote, um, is transparent, is more direct than the electoral college, which is not direct at all, and you know, the system of superdelegates, et cetera. So moving to a direct system, but there's going to be a, like a painful bump in the road to getting to that. So the, I'm seeing the... the uh, like precursors and steps being made toward that, but it's that's that's the long term. It needs to happen, but that's long term. 
So before the time gets away from us, Christy, can you let us know if people want to have a session with you, can you tell us a little bit about your practice and how people can get in touch with you down the road? Yeah, sure. My my uh, website is radiatewellnesscommunity.com, and they can go there and, and book online. I can do sessions in person in Kansas City. My office is in Waldo, which is in the middle of the city. I can also do sessions online for everything I do, all my services except for quantum healing hypnosis technique. I do have people travel in from out of state to come and experience that. Everything else I can do online. It's very effective. Yeah, that's how they can get in touch with me. All right. And they, also on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what I was getting ready to say. I've seen you on Facebook on a, a couple <clears throat> of different uh, ways. Uh, how can they reach you on Facebook? On Radiate Wellness, uh, Radiate Wellness LLC is our main business Facebook page. There's also our group, which is Radiate Wellness Community. And then I, my personal business page is Angels Guidance with Christy Clemens Hoffman. I do a lot of Facebook Lives on that. And I've got a Facebook Live coming up next Wednesday to, it's kind of, I called it a chakra party. I didn't know what else to call it. So I'll be, I've been doing a series on the chakras and what they are, what they represent, what they mean, how they work on Facebook Lives this past week. And so next week, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central, I'll be doing another live event, and then people who are watching, I can look at them and see just like where they might be blocked, what might be imbalanced, and what they can do to help get clear again. So that's going to be fun. I've never done anything like that before. And for listeners, Waldo is in the Kansas City area. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. And so, Christy, with the ending of 2019, a lot of people right now are doing cleansing ceremonies. I know at Unity mm-hmm. Church, the big thing is the the white stone mm-hmm. ceremony where we release right. the past. And do you have any kind of special um, rituals to bring in the new year, let go of the old? <clears throat> Meditation, 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 definitely. <laughs> uh, I, I'm with you there. Yeah, I consider meditation yeah, like right? the crown jewel of all the practices. It really is. Yeah, we did, um, one of the other practitioners with Radiate Wellness, we did a cleansing and clearing thing last uh, last Friday or the 27th, I don't know, and where we did a guided meditation to clear chakra by chakra. We just cleared all the stuff in the past year, um, journaling is good, writing it out, and then destroying it. So, of course, at, at Unity, we do the burning bowl before we do the white white stone. And the burning bowl, we are invited to write things on a slip of paper and then throw it into a fire and release it. Let it go. Let it go. It's that Pluto stuff, right? There's also new moon ceremonies, and so I always like to honor the new moon by doing that, release each month. And then at the end of the year, you don't have as much to release. But the, you know, the years are, the calendar years are fairly, um, fairly arbitrary. They're not, you know, they're more construct of humans rather than celestial, but we do mark them in many ways and just being cognizant, meditation, using that to clearing ground. Yeah. What do you recommend for, for clearing for the, for the year? Well, like, like Patrick said, he loves the meditation. Uh, for me, I, I'm a visual person, so I love to do the vision boards. Um, oh, you know, yeah. getting images on there of what do you want to create for the coming year. Uh, and I, I will be actually teaching a class on that at Unity Temple on the Plaza in February. So if you check out intuitiveschool.com website, you'll see what I'm doing that. But I think that's invaluable. And then you've got this visual reminder all year of, oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to create. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Absolutely. You know, yeah. That's why I like the white stone ceremony because you can, you know, I've got on my mantle. I usually put my white stones up on my mantle, so I see it every day. Yeah. And that's so is the, there any, the beauty of the okay. vision board. Mm-hmm. Uh, so is there anything that you wanted to share here because our time is uh, running out, unfortunately? We love having you on and having this conversation, but any last thoughts that you'd like to share? Just uh, check out my website, radiatewellnesscommunity.com. Uh, find me on Facebook, Angel's Guidance with Christy Clemens Hoffman. I do a lot of um, content there, schedule an appointment. But I'd say it all, it, above all else, just really plug into who and what we truly are. And that's where awareness really brings light to everything. 
Excellent. And now, I want to thank you so much for having me on. Hmm? Oh, you are very welcome. Now, you're getting ready to mention vision boarding, and I accidentally okay. cut you off there. Uh, did you want to just briefly share what that is in case there's somebody out there who doesn't know what that is? Oh, sure. So vision boarding, of course, like Catherine said, you, uh, you can find pictures, photos, print them off the Internet, or even just write them um, on some sort of board like a collage. And it's not really for any other purpose than to keep our vision on it. Because when you look at that, you go, that's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm wanting to do. That's what I'm wanting to bring in my life, just to keep it top of mind and create that vision. Of course, you know, we put the, put the call out to the universe. Um, you know, this is what I want to create. This is what I want to bring into my life and then let the universe do the rest. But we still have to take action steps toward it. Right. Well, and it goes say, back oh, to I'm... the fact that, you know, the mind, the language of the mind is images. It's not words. So it's almost more right. effective in some ways to call, use that law of attraction with images rather than words. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, and just to keep moving toward our goal with, with action, you know, we can say, well, I want to have a new relationship, but you know, if you don't clear out your closet, make room for somebody new, if you don't put yourself out there, if you don't get out and about and talk to people you meet, you're not going to have this relationship. It's not just going to poof into your life, we do have to put some skin in the game. You know, just as if we want to have uh, financial abundance, well, we can't just sit there and wish for it all the time. We need to get out there, have a job, get a, uh, another job for extra money, or, you know, play the lottery or make an investment, something that will or could bring that money in. And we have to have some sort of skin in the game and take active steps. It's not just going to happen. We need to meet the universe halfway. And having the vision board just keeps these things top of mind so that when we look at it every day, we go, yes, that's what I want. I'm not going to spend my time on all the other stuff. Right. And, and the universe always rewards action. And so since we have been talking a lot about, you know, time, oh, a new year, and some people, you know, don't like the idea of time, but we have to remember that there is the paradox. Time exists, yet it doesn't exist, right? We're, we're really right. endless, limitless beings. The universe, our existence never ends. It's always ongoing, yet while we're enslaved in these physical bodies, so to speak, um, right. time is real. You know, we, we have... It, and it, it serves as a structure and it does get people thinking about, oh, well, I better get on the ball because time's running out. So if we use it in that sense to kind of be a trigger to yes. say, oh, well, I, I don't have all the time in the world in this lifetime. I, I need to get on the ball um, as opposed to yes. getting freaked out about it uh, that, you know, hey, you will have another lifetime, another body, other existences. It's, it's ongoing. That's right. an excellent point. And another thing, too, is we'd have a really hard time coordinating, right, if we didn't have something that we could all agree on. Like, for example, all of us getting together to share this wonderful discussion at the right place and the right time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, it's very convenient. So when I talk about my birthday, I always uh, joke and say, well, congratulations, I had another successful orbit around the Earth getting ready for my next Absolutely. orbit. That's, that's what we're all really talking about, right? People... <laughs> yes. Statistics show that the people who have the most birthdays live the longest. <laughs> that is very true, very true. And on that note, uh, our show has come to an end for today, but that doesn't mean we have to be separated. Please connect with us and stay connected on Facebook at Spirits Journey Radio and like our page. You can study with us at intuitiveschool.com. This has been Spirits Journey Live on Truth Frequency Radio, simulcast on One Talk Radio. I'm Patrick. And I'm Kiev.